Hi guys, my name is Haley or Baywitch Blooming and welcome to my channel or welcome back if you have been here before. Today I'm going to be going over 10 things that I really wish I would have known earlier when it comes to doing resin. These things would have saved me money, saved me time, frustration, a couple tears of a frustration, <laughs> and basically just a lot of time and money. So before I get started, I do just want to let you know that I am linking my website as well as my Instagram and my Patreon down below. And then I also want to let you know that these cool earrings that I'm wearing are from my beautiful friend Amanda at root to rise designs on Instagram and I'll also tag her below as well as her Etsy shop because she's absolutely amazing. So that being said, let's go ahead and jump into it today. So the first thing that I really wish that I would have known earlier is to use the proper protective equipment. Obviously I wore gloves when I was pouring and when I was dealing with my resin, but I definitely didn't wear a respirator for the first few months and I didn't have alcohol when I first started. So I would always recommend having gloves, a respirator for the fumes, and then also alcohol on hand in case you get some resin on your hands or on other parts of your skin like your arm or your leg and the alcohol will get it off really easily. And I know that it may seem like you don't want to spend the money on the respirator, it may not be useful or worth it, but I didn't use a respirator for the first few months and my lungs started to get like really itchy and um, almost kind of hurt. And then I would get headaches and dizzy when I would pour. So I have not had any of those problems since I've been wearing my respirator. So definitely that is the first thing that I think is important. Oh, and also when you're sanding anything, you should wear an N95 because the dust particles are really, really dangerous too. So just making sure that you have all the proper protective equipment because you don't want to get sick from the art that you're making. And then, so second thing that I think is really important is having a level table. Oh my God, it will save you so much frustration when you're doming especially, but when you're doing anything, if your table's not level, things will shift. Um, not only will things shift, but your whole piece will be uneven. Or if you're doing something bigger like a shelf or an ashtray, the bottom of it might not be even because one side might press out more than the other. So I would actually recommend getting a level and making sure your table is level because those plastic tables, especially the plastic tables that fold, those aren't necessarily level, they dip. And the part in the middle is actually a little bit higher because of where it folds out. So those tables aren't level and it's really important because it'll mess up your pieces. I've had so much frustration because of this. I wish I'd listened to my husband and just made my table level, but you live and you learn. <laughs> so the third thing that is super important and I wish that I had known before is that you can warm your resin up in warm water, like warm water that's in a bowl or warm water that you fill up in your sink. And you can put your resin bottles in there so that actually warms your resin up and makes it easier to pour with less bubbles. So that kind of goes into the fourth thing that I wish I knew, which is to pour slowly and to stir slowly. If you pour your resin really fast or you stir your resin really fast, then it is going to create more bubbles. And we don't want bubbles because everyone hates bubbles. So the fifth thing that I would say that's really important is to get a large reusable mixing cup so that you don't have to use those tiny like 100 milliliter mixing cups because don't nobody want to mix resin that many times and it's really important to make sure you do the right ratios that your resin says whether it's a 1 to 1, 2 to 1, 3 to 1, whichever kind you use. So I like to use like these paint mixing cups and they have measurements on the sides. You can get them on Amazon, I'll link them below, or you can also get them from a local hardware store or Home Depot or Lowe's. And I personally like to use 
mixing cups that are plastic type 5 because plastic type 5 can be reused over time with resin. If you leave the resin to dry in it and leave like a popsicle stick or your stir stick in there, then the next day you can actually come back and take the resin out of the mixing cup so that you're not creating as much waste. This is my kitty Pantera. Say hi to everyone, baby. She's my little queen, my little familiar, and my nemesis because her hair gets everything. The sixth thing that I would say is super important is to make sure that you store and clean your molds properly. I usually use packing tape to lightly take off any dust or hair from molds and then I like to store them either in saran wrap if they're larger molds or I put them in large baggies if they are smaller molds. This way when I'm not using them they stay clean and they don't get dust in them because over time if you try to clean them too many times or are too aggressive with the tape or anything like that, you can actually make the mold not shiny so the mold will end up turning into a matte finish. The seventh thing that I wish I knew, torches. <laughs> They're not your friend, do not use a torch or at least if, if you're going to use a torch, I wouldn't recommend it, but if you're going to, be super duper careful because torches are so hot. It's a lot easier and safer to use a heat gun. And the reason why is because if you use a torch or even if you use a heat gun too much, then you will make your resin heat up too much. And when the resin is curing, it will bond to the mold and then it'll actually tear apart the mold when you're trying to get the resin piece out. And then you won't be able to use your mold anymore. I did this on the second time of using my first big mold. And I, I was so sad. Y'all, I cried. I cried. <laughs> so seriously, I would not recommend using a torch. I would always recommend using a heat gun. But if you are very set on using a torch, because let's be real, it does get bubbles out faster. If you're really set on using a torch, make sure that you are really careful and you never put the torch directly onto the resin, you're doing it from very far away, um, etc. The eighth thing that I think is super important is prepping everything before you actually start mixing your resin. The reason why I say this is because if you are trying to figure out what glitters or what flowers, butterflies, whatever you're going to use after you've already started pouring resin, one, your resin's gonna start curing and start getting tacky, and two, you probably have resin on your hands, so you're probably gonna get resin on everything, which is so annoying, you don't want it. So, so I would just recommend, before you actually start pouring, to prep everything, like all the, all the glitters, all the pigments, whatever you're gonna do in the separate cups that you need, and then that way, once you've actually mixed the resin, you can just kind of knock everything out before your resin gets tacky because when it's tacky, it's easier for bubbles to get in there. And then you also prevent getting all of your supplies super dirty, which no one wants. The ninth thing that I wish I knew when I started resin was covering my pieces. I would recommend getting a large Tupperware or a cake cover because you definitely don't want hair or lint getting in your pieces and ruining the entire thing, or a fly, which <laughs> we have all, almost every resin artist, if not all, has had a fly land in there in at least one piece, let's be real. Just add some creativity, I guess, but <laughs> no one wants that to happen, so I would highly recommend covering your pieces once you're done or like while they're curing to make sure that no debris, no lint, no hair, nothing like that can get in them. And then the 10th thing that I wish I knew was being patient. <laughs> Just be patient. If you are not patient with your pieces, you aren't willing to like be patient and pour in two layers when you need to pour in two layers, you might ruin molds, you might ruin pieces, and if you try to pull molds out of, or if you try to pull pieces out of their mold too early, 
you can not only ruin the piece, but you ruin the mold. And molds are expensive. We spend a lot of money on our molds. So I know it's exciting and I'm super guilty of this, but be patient. Whether it comes to pouring layers, waiting for it to cure, or even etching and doming. Just say be patient and be patient with yourself because you will make mistakes. It's not the end of the world. Pretty sure most resin artists have literally cried over a piece, but we all know how that goes. So overall, I hope this video was helpful. I hope that it provided you guys with some tips that will prevent you from making the same mistakes that I did, or at least saving a little bit of money by making them less times than I did. If this video was interesting to you, or if you're interested in resin tutorials or things of that nature, please go ahead and click subscribe below. It would mean the world to me, and I will see you guys next time. Thank you. Bye.